Is the genetic code really a code? It is a code. It's definitely a code. And it is a code that's put together, not by a designer, but by natural selection. It's very easy to see how that can happen in principle. Details, of course, need to be worked out. But nevertheless, there is no problem in saying that DNA would be a code in just the same kind of way as a computer code. It certainly is a code. Uh, you can read it as a code. You could, you could even transcribe. I think I put this in River Out of Eden. You could even transcribe a book uh, oh, into yeah. DNA letters and you could read it out again. You could, could preserve it in DNA. That's, that's how code-like it is. It really is a completely code-like code. A digital code is merely quaternary rather than binary. And of course, it's not put together by designer. It's put together by natural selection. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think maybe the best way to go about this is to just try and talk about what information is in general. I mean, or we could talk about we, we could talk about computer code in general, too, because that one of the things I think a lot of people in my generation have difficulty understanding. We think of code as this magical thing because the computers that we have are basically like they work like magic to us. Smartphones are so far beyond our comprehension that we can't make sense of them. Whereas when you were first working with computers, things were a lot more mechanical. How they worked was a lot more obvious. Maybe, maybe talking about your experience with that would be helpful. Well, it's true that I, when I did in, in my career, I, I have had a sort of rather misspent youth. Um, and part of that was writing machine code programs. With machine code programs, you really are very close to the hardware. Um, you're, you're writing in assembly language, which is uh, just one removed from writing down ones and noughts. And you have to be very familiar with the ones and noughts. So you're very, uh, acquainted with the idea that it really is is digital. That's, well, that, there's a piece of computer yeah. tape, which is very familiar to me because when I first started uh, computing, um, we did everything on punch paper tape like that. In America, at the same time, they were using punch cards, the same idea. Mm -hmm. But in Britain, we had, we had um, British, British computers had punch paper tape. So you really were right down there among the digits, among the binary right. digits, among the noughts and ones and got a very clear conception of the relationship between writing a program and actually putting noughts and ones into the computer. You could even correct errors by changing a one into a naught, or by actually literally punching an extra hole right, in, right. in that tape, or even sticking a bit of, a bit of tape over a, a, a hole that shouldn't be there. So yeah. We were that, that close to it. I didn't even know that these things existed until... Uh, maybe a couple of months ago, I started looking this up. I got so, I was so interested in, in the similarity between these old punch tape computers and the ribosome, because it's reading uh, it's reading this a lot like messenger RNA. You know, you've got uh, it is. You, you know yes. each what, what do you call this? Um, each byte here is um, yes would that, be, that would be like that, a codon. That, that's that that's an eight bit tape, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was I was using first of all five bit tapes and then eight bit tapes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. In a way, tape is better than cards for that analogy because yeah. um, cards are discrete objects. If you drop them on the floor, <laughs> it's been a very bad thing. I discovered when I went to America and started having to use punch cards. Yeah. Um, but tape is much more like DNA because it because it is a long a long string, yeah. um, and and so the, the the analogy is even closer in a trivial sense, of course. I think that maybe that's one of the reasons that people have difficulty understanding the link between the genetic code and computer code is because, you know, that, that basic machine code language is none of us experience, none of us interact with that anymore. And it actually made me think, I wonder if, uh, if DNA hadn't been discovered right after, you know, we were breaking codes in World War II, and then when people were using stuff like this, I, I wonder if it would have taken us longer to figure out the genetic code or if we have, ever even would have, if we discovered DNA at the wrong point in history, you know? Interesting. Yes, that's an interesting thought. Um, and you're right, of course, that nowadays, since we're a little bit further away from the machine code level, uh, we're accustomed to dealing with computers at a higher level where we're dealing with whole programs um, and um, it's almost as though the computers are sort of human. I mean, we talk about oh, yeah. it, it thinks it's a so-and-so or, or, or um, 
it, it, it thinks it's talking to the wrong kind of printer, that, that kind of thing. We use, we use metaphoric language like thinking, um, yeah. which is at a, at a higher level. That's rather suitable actually for understanding perhaps how the brain works, but for understanding how genes work, um, the punch paper tape metaphor is perhaps a bit more suitable 